Hey guys, this is Mark Goldberg from Mark Vlogs Watches, and today we are going to talk about a horological horror story. And um, I, I'm going to reveal something about my own personality, my own mental health, my, <laughs> you know, my own set of weirdnesses and obsessions that I think will give you better insight into my psychology. But most of all, I, I hope it will help you because I am sure that many of us suffer from the same symptoms of this watch disease. It takes many forms, but quite frankly, I've got it bad. I don't think that's going to be any surprise to any of you. But before we get into the meat and potatoes of this horological nightmare and conundrum and dilemma, let's do the quick fist watch check, get it out of the way, and here it is. Today, people, I am wearing the Rolex Submariner in glorious 904L steel and ceramic. Okay, take a walk with me and let's talk about horology, the illness, watch disease, and the symptoms that I personally suffer from. And let's see if you are in the same boat as me and if my solution, so-called, will help you. I've got the medicine. Okay, so first, what's the nature of the problem? Well, the problem is uh, I, I'm lucky, I'm fortunate, I, I own a bunch of watches. If you want the exact total, I'll have to go count, <laughs> you know? Part of the disease is I don't really wanna know how bad it gets, so I don't actually have a, a complete count. In fact, I don't even know the number of Rolexes without sort of ticking through them. But um, I do have, let's just kind of, let me run you through a few things just in terms of Rolex. So I've got the Rolex Submariner in 40 millimeters. I have the 43 millimeter Redline Anniversary Sea Dweller. I have a Sky Dweller in two-tone, a Polar Explorer in 42 millimeters, a James Cameron, a 34 millimeter Date in two-tone, a Batman, and uh, I'll think a second, but you know, that might be it. Oh, and uh, a two, <laughs> I forgot one, a two-tone Submariner Bluesy, which uh, that one's for sale. Um, okay, take a walk, let's talk about this. And um, let's talk about how the symptoms are affecting me and how I decide what I'm going to wear. Because really the biggest problem I have is trying to pick out what I'm going to wear, not, at any, not on any given day, at any given moment. So guys, the, the real problem happens to be that I am not only a serial watch buyer, but worse yet, I am a serial watch rotator. I mean, these are two really separate issues. So. I think another video will be how many watches should you buy? What do I do? Why do I buy so many? Because I'm kind of a little bit in more in the consolidation phase uh, a little bit right now, I think, in the sense that I have sold off a bunch of watches. Um, I did make a video about that, so I'll put a link to it in the description. I'm sort of, I'm trying to consolidate my collection um, into a, a little bit Rolex heavy, um, but this is you know, more or less what I like. But really, here's the biggest problem that I wanna talk about, and this isn't even really that funny. Yesterday was a bad day, and it got me to thinking about this. How to select what watch I'm going to wear. Now, I watched an Austin Daniels video recently. Um, heck, I'll, put a, I'll, I'll link that in the description of this video too, where he talks about how he wears a watch for one, two, three, even four weeks at a time. And then he just gets bored with it, he moves on to the next one or something to that effect. And um, I really admire, <laughs> you know, I really admire that, but I can't do it. My problem is I sort of go to bed at night thinking about what I'm going to wear in the morning. And then it is not at all unusual for me to change watches three, four, five, six times per day. And this is beyond horological collecting. This is beyond a hobby. This sort of gets into the realm of some kind of obsessive sickness. And rather than making me happy, it makes me anxious. And I put a whole lot of energy into this, quite frankly, to the point where sometimes it can get exhausting. Now, I'm glad to have a YouTube channel because I feel like you are coming with me on this journey. Some of you right now are shaking your heads going, Goldberg, changing watches five, six times a day, what is wrong with you? Uh, others of you are thinking, uh-huh, I know exactly what's wrong with you because I have it too. 
So whether this is new to you or whether you are suffering from the same thing, I'm glad that you're coming along with me on this video. Please stick with me. Oh, by the way, I'm working pretty hard to try and be one of your favorite YouTubers. I don't need to be your main man, whoever your main man is, I, but I do want you to come with me on this journey. So please like, subscribe, come with me uh, as I talk about watches. I have a lot more fun and also crazy stuff that I'd like to share with you. So yeah, please subscribe. It really helps me when I see my numbers trickling upward. But at any rate, um, I put far too much energy into selecting what I'm going to wear. And it sounds like, if you don't understand this problem, substitute washing your hands 20, 30, 40, 50 times a day. Then that's not the manifestation of OCD that I have. I don't, I don't have that. But imagine, but imagine you did have that. Imagine how you would either be constantly washing your hands or thinking about washing your hands or planning the washing of your hands or trying not to do it. Uh, you know, and it's that, and that's me to a certain extent. Now, I don't feel like I need to run to therapy in the sense that this is interfering with my life. It's not. I'm not staying home and rotating watches when I should be doing other things. I integrate it into my day. But there's, and there's days when I don't do that. There's days when I just put on a watch and I keep it on all day and I don't think twice. Ooh, but then there's days like yesterday where I, my head is just spinning with, you know, like, what do I do? And then I think, well, maybe if I buy a watch that I like well enough, I can stop doing this. I'll just, it'll be, it'll be my one true watch. You know, the, the, the unicorn, the grail, the unobtainable unicorn exit watch. But I, I, I now believe that to be a myth. After having been through this so many different times, I believe the exit watch is a myth. And um, so I think really, the concept is to come up with a rotation plan. Now, I have done many, 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 many rotation plans, including telling myself, damn it, you know, you're not touching a watch for like eight hours, putting a timer on, you know, just restricting myself. But that's a lot like dieting with a piece of cheesecake in the fridge, and you're saying to yourself, I'm not going to eat it. And you, you say to yourself all day long, I'm not going to eat it. And then what do you do? You, you just get up in the middle of the night, you eat the damn thing half frozen, you know, because you've just done, your self-restraint just ran out. So what I needed was a plan and I needed the plan to be reasonable, achievable. I needed it to be actually something that I could live with. And uh, in just a moment, we're going to walk back up to the house where I have laid out on a table uh, a couple of watches. But before that, I want to talk to you about the plan. The first thing is, is that I have a safe and uh, a safety deposit box. So there are some watches I just keep out of the house, and then there are some things that I keep in the house but locked up in a safe. Half of the reason for the safe is to keep them locked up away from burglars. Although I have a burglar alarm, dogs, guns, you know, I'm, I'm full up here with self-protection. But um, at the same time, I don't want all my watches in a drawer where I'm tempted to just constantly paw over them. I think it's far better for me if they're put away and I just occasionally access them. So I have come up with uh, I have come up with a plan, and the plan is three. It's the Holy Trinity. No, it is not the Tech Vachelin et Constantin, L. Du Mal Piguet. That is not my Trinity. My Trinity is three watches, one watch per purpose during the day. So I have a watch that I sleep in. And we're going to talk about it and I'm going to show it to you. I have a watch that I work in. We're going to talk about it and I'll show you that one. And then I have a watch and it is this one that I wear when I am neither sleeping nor working. And um, is that the only three? No, I have a lot more watches. So I may occasionally pull the work watch out of rotation and change it over for another one. The not working watch. Uh, I have multiples. I you know, this could change to the Polar Explorer, in which case then I would put this one in the safe, pull out the Polar Explorer, and that would be my, you know, work watch until I just decide to change it over. Well, I don't know if my form of therapy is going to work for you, but let's take a look. <laughs> let's take a look at the holy trio of watches that I am referring to, and I'll walk you through how it has been saving my sanity. Okay, I'm only 24 hours into the cure, but so far I'm hopeful. It seems to be working. Okay, guys, well, here you are looking at my holy trinity of watches. So on the far left, we have a ball watch. And uh, this is the watch that I'm sleeping in. It is a world timer, and it has a dive watch function. 
One of the things that I really like is to have some kind of a, a fidget spinner or something to play with. And um, that crown up at 2 o'clock rotates the internal dive bezel. And um, so I could use it while I was working if I wanted to time things. And I like that idea. But the main reason this is my work watch is because of the tritium tubes. You can definitely see it on the second hand there. So all the, all the, um, there's a glow, steady. You don't need to recharge it. It just glows for like 20 years. And um, I'll throw a picture of the loom right here. And uh, it glows like that 24-7 for like 20 years. So certainly you'll understand why I would use this as a nighttime watch. It's It's also the watch that I would take to the movies. Now, the I could work, of course, in the ball watch because it's a very robust watch and I wouldn't really worry much about scratching it. Um, but I wake up. <laughs> okay, here's a crazy thing. Because I've worn a watch for, you know, seven, eight hours overnight, I wake up and I want to get out of it. I mean, I'm bored with it. I want to change watches. It's part of my syndrome, I think. So I have this all-metal uh, G-Shock. I call it the not a -less. Um, I sold the Toilet Oak, but this is the uh, not a -less because it's, it's not a Nautilus, but it kind of looks like one if you look at it and look away really quick. But um, what I really like about this for working is um, uh, many times I have to make notes about, I'm a dog trainer and I do training sessions and I make notes uh, about when the dog ate and went to the bathroom and when my training sessions took, took place. And so I get a, a quick, perfect readout of the date, time, and the digital time. It's also highly waterproof, down to 200 meters, and super shock resistant, and I'm not ashamed to wear it. It's, it's a fun watch, and it's really quite pretty. And then the Submariner right now is filling the role for me of what I wear when I am not sleeping, when I am not working, when I'm doing any other activity. So this is the watch that I have been wearing for that. Um, now, of course, I have multiple watches that I could substitute for this Submariner. So I think if I was going to go out to dinner and do something fancy, I would put the Submariner away and I would pull out the Two-Tone Sky Dweller as an example. And sometimes I just miss the Polar Explorer or the James Cameron um, or the 50th Anniversary Sea Dweller, in which case then I put the Submariner away and I pull that watch out, whether it's for a couple of hours or for a few days. But out of sight, out of mind, if I have those watches, either off-site or in the safe, then I'm not thinking about them. I do have a watch winder, guys, and um, in the watch winder, um, when I'm wearing the G-Shock for work, these two guys will be in the watch winder. It's a, it's a double watch winder, so they, they fit together, but there's room for nothing else. And then uh, when I need to rewind this, I just put it in the windowsill <laughs> because it's solar recharge, solar power. You see that brick? pattern along the um, inner edge running right uh, right through there and all the way around that brick pattern are the solar is the solar cell for recharge also this watch um, bluetooths to my phone so it's really so I can I don't need to like use all these different buttons and the uh, to to set all the various functions I can run it from my phone if I need to so this really is my trio, and the fact that I don't come down uh, to my window or watch winder and say, what do I feel like wearing? I have designated purpose watches, sleeping, working, everything else. And then if I wanted to get fancy for going out, I would pull out a fancier watch. That's how I've done this solution. So I'm going to turn the camera around so we can just chat about the solution, see what you guys think. So I literally just had this moment where um, I was turning the camera around and I thought, ooh, you know, I've been wearing the Submariner for a while. Now I could, I could put on one of those other two. Like I could put that ball watch on. And then I thought, no, it's not bedtime. <laughs> you know, I got to stick to the rules. I think the rules are the only, the only thing that's keeping me safe. So... Uh, you know, the only other guy who I know who talks about watch disease to this level is Jeff McMahon. And, um, 
he says he's cured. His, he made a video recently where he said he was cured. And I, and I, I like Jeff, but I, I, I corresponded with him and I, and I, and I said something kind of nasty that I now regret. I mean, I, he knew I was joking, but I, I texted him and I said, oh, that's very funny. You're cured. You're in remission, <laughs> you know, bro. <laughs> that, that's all this is. And he laughed and carried on. Um, I hope I'm cured. Jeff, and, uh, but maybe we're both of us just in remission. I'm not entirely sure. I know it's a little crazy, but talk to me. Do you have problems not only buying watches, but um, in rotating them far too often? You see, I work at home. If I worked somewhere else, you know, it'd probably be a little easier for me because I wouldn't have constant access to my watches. But, you know, there's the workplace back there, guys. I work at home. So, um, you know, so I'm constantly able to snag watches and I, I'm not sure that's a good thing for me. I have rambled on far too long, but I guess what I'm trying to say is I have a small problem. Hopefully I've come up with a solution. If you have this problem, you should come up with a solution. Maybe this one will help you. Please do like and subscribe. Talk to me in the comments about whether you suffer for your art or whether this is just a fun hobby for you. For me, it's kind of both. <laughs> There's, you know, it's definitely fun. All I can say is thank God for you guys. If I was doing this all by myself, I think I would be lonely, sad, and pathetic. And uh, instead, I'm in good company and I have friends. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know who you are. Okay, this is Goldberg. Peace out. <laughs>